ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد امين اما بعد we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praising him, by glorifying him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to shower us in this gathering with his mercy and his forgiveness. And make it a source of benefit for us in dunya and akhirah. Say Ameen. Now, one of the amazing stories mentioned in the Quran is the story of Musa alayhi wa sallam. And some of our scholars said, the entire Qur'an was almost going to become the story of Musa alayhi salam. It's mentioned a lot. And Musa alayhi salam is the most mentioned prophet in the Qur'an. And our ulama, they said that when you study the story of Musa alayhi salam, you notice that Musa alayhi salam's story is filled with amazing events. At the same time, his humanity is displayed. Where you read it and you can relate to it. Everything that happens in his life has a symbolic representation of something else within our lives. And so Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, when he left Egypt, he left in a state of fear. He had, he had killed someone by accident, and people were looking for him, so he was a fugitive on the run. And he had this very strong sense of justice, and he walked for miles and miles through the desert, and ended up in the city, in the, in the, in the place called Madian. And while he's there, his shoes are worn out, his hair is all shaggy, his clothing is, even though he was dressed in the clothing of the palace, is now covered in dust, he had no food, no water, he comes to a place, he sees two women trying to get some water. And a lot of men are surrounding the, the well, and they, they're just waiting. Musa alayhi salam, in that state even, stands up for justice and helps them out. After that, he makes a dua. This dua is a powerful dua. Some people are struggling with their housing situation. Some people are struggling with family situation. Some people are struggling with their job situation. Whatever the situation is, Musa alayhi salam was in the worst possible position. He had lost his home. He had lost his job. He had lost his family. He was by himself. He was in the desert. So he sits down and he calls out to Allah, Rabbi, inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin fatih. Oh Allah, whatever good you're going to send me, I am fakir. I need it. And this recognition of the servant of Allah being completely dependent on Allah, this is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nas, antumul fuqara. Oh human beings, you're all fuqara. You're all fakir. Wallahu ghani. Allah, he is the rich one. Allah is the one with the wealth. Allah is the one with all the goods. You are in complete, utter dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes when we feel we are independent, we become, uh, we start to overstep our boundaries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla insal inna insana la yadgha ar ra'ahu stagna. No, human being will start transgressing, start doing wrong things, the moment he starts feeling self-sufficient. Everything is good, I'm taken care of. That's when they start doing transgressive things. So Musa السلام, he declares to Allah, Inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. I am in complete need of whatever you send me. He is filled with fear. And he's calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah responds, one dua. One of the ladies come and she says, my father is calling you. And he walks in front of her, he arrives to the place, and he tells his story, what happened, and then the, the man says, you have left the place of the Zalimun. You're far away from them now, they cannot reach you, they cannot harm you, and here's my offer to you. Marry one of my daughters, work for me for eight years, if you do ten years, that's better. And so, in one shot, he gets shelter, he gets family, and he gets a job, everything done. One dua. 
Musa alayhi salam returns to uh, Egypt in search of, of, of his family, going back missing his, his family. On the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to Musa alayhi salam. And we all know this famous moment in history when he sees the light in the desert. And he says, Inni anas Definitely, I see some light. You know, let me go there. Maybe I can bring you some light or some guidance. And he arrives to Tura Sinin, this place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts speaking with Musa alayhi salam. Take off your shoes, O Musa. In the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night, he is approaching this hill and he goes and he hears a voice calling out by his name. Take off your shoes, O Musa. You have entered the sacred place. What do you think is the natural reaction? Scared. Musa alayhi salam scared. He left Egypt because he was scared. On the way back, he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wahi starts happening, he's scared. But he complies. He takes off his shoes and he enters, he sees a tree that's on fire, burning. And with every moment, the tree is getting greener as it's burning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him, It is me, Allah, there is no God except for me. You know, Aqimu Salat al Dhikri, establish the prayer for my remembrance. And then Musa is in a state of shock. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What's in your right hand? Very familiar to Musa alayhi salam, his staff. Something he's dealt with his whole life. He starts explaining what it is. Allah says, throw it down. He throws it down. فَإِذَا هِيَ حَيَّةٌ تَسْعَفْ Turns it to a snake. Musa is what? Scared. He runs away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُذْهَا وَلَا تَخَفْ Grab it. Don't be scared. Grab it. Don't be scared. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shaking Musa alayhi salam. His heart is being afraid from all the things that he's witnessing. But the reality is, as he's afraid, Allah is telling him, La takhaf, don't be afraid. La takhaf, don't be afraid. You will see it go back to its former state. After this whole thing is done, Allah says, Here is, here is what you need to do, O Musa. Idhab ila Fir'aun, fa innahu taqa. Go to Fir'aun. Because he is transgressing its limits. He's going beyond his limits. Why? Because he sees himself as self-sufficient. He sees himself as independent. Whereas he's completely dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We become Fir'aun when we think we are independent. Musa is being told, go to Fir'aun and remind him. He's not independent. Musa says, Ya Allah, I'm afraid. Send my brother with me. Because he's, he's more eloquent in his speech. Fir'aun might not listen to me. Allah says, you and your brother, both of you go. Now scenes change, the both of them standing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the mission and they say, Rabbana innana nakhafa. Oh Allah, we are scared. He might kill us. They know Fir'aun. Imagine somebody is known to be murderous, killing. You, nobody can look at him wrong because he'll just say off with his head. They're being told to go speak to that person. They're thinking they can't even make past the security guards. Allah says, don't worry. Go both of you, inni ma'akuma. I am with the both of you. After all of this, they're still, still scared. Allah says, go, I am with the both of you. I am with you. Inni asma wa ara. I see and I hear. Now, you know, seeing and hearing. Seeing is somebody far away you can see. Hearing, somebody's very close to you who can hear. And so Allah is telling them, I am with you. I'm watching and I'm listening. La ilaha illallah. Right, so Musa alayhi salam arrives and all these things happen, the dialogue between him and Fir'aun and you know, days pass, weeks pass, months pass, Fir'aun challenges them, says, what you have brought is magic, I have better magic than you, bring all the, the magician scholars and then they, they have a, a battle, magic battle. Musa alayhi salam has been told many times by this point, don't be afraid, Allah is with you. Don't be afraid, Allah is with you. So still in that state, he, you know, he's, he's still overcoming this because you're in this world, they're part of the world, there's natural things and part of the things, fear and all these emotions. Musa is standing with his brother on one side, army of magicians standing on the other side and they say, you want to throw first or should we throw first? But uncle, you throw. So Musa alayhi salam throws, you know, they throw their staffs and they turn into snakes. Allah says, فَأَوْجَسَ فِي نَفْسِهِ خِيفَةً مِسَا Even after all of that, Musa alayhi salam in his heart still felt what? Fear, afraid. Allah said, قُلْنَا لَا تَخَفْ Don't be afraid. 
إنك أنت الأعلى. You are in a higher position. وأدخل في يمينك تلطف ما سلو. Throw what's in your right hand. It will destroy their works. All the evil plots that they have done. Everything. Why? Because you're on the side of the truth. When the truth is on your side and Allah is with you, who can who can stand up against you? Who can do anything against you? You know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is running. وإنك أنت الأعلى. You're on the you're on the high. So. The moment passes, the magicians, they, they bow down, they see the, the, the miracle in front of them, the staff of Musa salam, eats up all their snakes and their ropes. And then years pass, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Musa salam, go and tell my servants to take to the sea by night. Pharaoh is pursuing them, they come to the sea, everybody's afraid now. Who's not afraid? Musa salam. They're all looking at him. Inna la mudrakum. We are dead. We're finished. Musa alayhi salam says, "Kalla no. Inna ma'ya Rabbi. Allah is with me. Sayyidin. He will guide me." They're standing. Front of them is the Red Sea. To their right is a mountain. To their left is a mountain. Army behind them. Dust are rising. They're getting closer and closer. Everybody thinks we're dead. And in a hopeless situation now, Musa alayhi salam already knows the truth. What's the truth? Allah is with you. Allah is with you. Allah is with you. Inna ma ya Rabbi. Sayyidin. As soon as he says that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala splits the sea open for him. And so, the reality is, Allah is with you. When we say, La ilaha illallah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whoever remembers Allah to himself, Allah remembers him to himself. Whoever remembers Allah in a gathering, Allah remembers them in a gathering, higher than it. Whoever says Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Remember Allah and you will find him with you. You know, remember Allah wherever you are and you will find His help is with you. Remember Allah and, and, and you, Allah will be with you in whatever situation you're in. And Allah is with you while you're in this world. Allah is with you when you go to the grave. Allah is with you when you come out of the grave. Because you know, La ilaha illallah. You know, La ilaha illallah. And so, something we can take from this in moments of trial and difficulties and challenges is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He did not abandon us. Allah told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Your Lord, He didn't abandon you. You're not forgotten about. He didn't leave you to, to figure things out on your own. He's with you. Inni asma wa ara, He says. I am watching and I'm listening. So we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to grant us that awareness. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah alayhi wa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Another incident happened with Muhammad sallallahu when the Quraysh they plotted to kill our beloved Prophet sallallahu and they brought in people from every tribe, one person with spears, armed to the teeth. They went surrounded the house of the Prophet sallallahu and Muhammad sallallahu was told, Ya Rasulullah, leave, they're coming for you. He said, Ali, you sleep in my bed. Ali radiallahu said, I will be in your place. And he slept in the bed of the Prophet And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi said, We have placed a veil in front of them and behind them, so they have been covered, they cannot see. He opened the door and walked out right in front of the, the people that had come to assassinate our beloved sallallahu They did not see. And they're waiting for him to fall asleep so they can go in there and do their evil deed. And they go in there and they find it's not Muhammad Sallallahu So they say, what's going on? What's going on? And so they go and they start pursuing. By this time Muhammad Sallallahu is with Abu Bakr radiallahu. And they're traveling through the desert. And they have people tracking the footsteps of the camels. They say they went this way, this way. And so they go and they arrive to the cave. Muhammad Sallallahu is inside the cave. Abu Bakr is there with him. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is shaking with fear. He's afraid, not for himself, he says, I was not afraid for myself. I was afraid they were going to harm Muhammad Sallallahu And the people walk up to the cave and they can see their feet. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said, if they just look down, they would have seen us. And Muhammad Sallallahu as Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is shaking with fear, places his hand over the hand of his friend. He says, oh Abu Bakr, la ta'zal, don't be upset. Don't be sad. Inna Allah is with us. 
Right? And as he's doing this, there's a spider being commanded, build your web. The spider starts weaving its web and covers the entire opening of the cave. And they approach the cave, they see the spider's web un untouched. So if they went in here, they would have broken the spider's web. They cannot be here. You, tracker guy, you misguided us, but you could have caught up with them. They went the other way and they started leaving. And Abu Bakr says, on that day I realized what it means, Allah is with us. When Muhammad Sallallahu died, and everybody was afraid, they said, you know, the Prophet had dispatched an army to go fight the Romans. And everybody told Abu Bakr, he's not the Khalifa, they said, don't send this army to fight the Romans. We have people around Medina, they're leaving Islam, they're becoming mortal, and they're going to fight us. Don't do this. Keep the army here. We need to protect ourselves. 3,000 soldiers. Right? Abu Bakr said, I will not be the first one to untie a knot Muhammad Sallallahu had tied. This army is going to leave just as the Prophet commanded. Even if they come into the Medina and drag the wives of the Prophet by their hairs, I will not do this. Undo what the Prophet Sallallahu did. So he sticks to it and he sends the army out. And as the army is leaving, there were people around Medina who were planning to not pay zakah and they were plotting to attack Medina. And the people, the enemies of Islam were plotting to attack. And when they saw, you know, an army leaving to fight the Romans, they said, if they've got these many soldiers going to fight the Romans and no one messes with Romans, I wonder how many people they have defending Medina. Let's back down. They all back down. And this army went to fight the Romans. The Romans, they thought, Muslims will be afraid. No one's going to fight them. And they, they heard an army is coming to you to fight you in your land. They all abandoned camp and left. They got afraid. And Muslims came and landed there and they found all the ghanima and they brought back victorious with honor. And when they came back to Abu Bakr, they said, how did you know? There's nothing bad was going to happen. How did you know? He said, the Prophet ﷺ put his hand on my head. He said, la tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. Allah is with us. When you obey Allah and His Messenger, you know He's with you. What are you worried about? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower us with His mercy, to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to guide us to the straight path and show us the truth as the truth and help us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and keep us away from it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Ahmad Rahimi, Ya Rabbi al Alameen, don't let us die except in a state of iman, Ya Allah. Protect us from all kinds of deviances, Ya Allah. We ask Ya Ahmad Rahimin, you are the one who, to whom we depend, Ya Allah. You are the one on whom we depend, Ya Allah. Allah. Protect us, Ya Allah, and be with us, Ya Allah, and don't be against us, Ya Allah. And on the day of judgment, honor us, Ya Allah, and enter us into Jannah for those who Allah amongst your beloved, Ya Allah, Siddiqeen and Shuhada and Salihin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask, Ya Allah, anyone going through hardship, grant us ease, Ya Allah. Anyone struggling in their families, unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Anyone struggling in their health, Ya Allah, grant us shifa, Ya Allah. Anyone going through any kind of difficulty, Ya Allah, you are our guardian, you are our protector. Grant us openings, Ya Allah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, wa la alayhi wa sallam. أجمعين وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة